Listeners, beware, you're in for a scare. Howdy folks, welcome to Nightmare on Fear Street, an R.L. Stein podcast, and I'm your host, Zach. And guys, it's time to go to the movies! Woo! Yay! We're all going to the huge old multiplex? Nah, we're not going to that one. We're going to the two-seat theater? Nah, we're not going to that one either. We're going to my mom's basement with like a weird like bed sheet and like a digital projector? Yeah, let's do that! So... Yes, so I'm actually here with my friend Jimmy over here. Why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? Hey, everyone. My name is Jimmy George. I am a screenwriter and producer uh, from Baltimore, Maryland. Ah, sweet. Good old Baltimore. I've been there Oh, cool. twice in my life. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. <laughs> no, usually when there's like no hurricanes or fires or like Godzilla attacking, <laughs> it's usually a really quaint place. Yeah. So, uh, Jimmy, what type of movies do you do? Uh, I make mostly horror comedies. They're usually high on the comedy, uh, low on the scares. Yeah, I've seen um, Call Girls of Cthulhu. Oh, nice. That's the only one I've really watched and I've been introduced to because I have a friend that just loves Cthulhu stuff. So we end up just watching everything like that. Nice. So So that's that's how you found out about who I am? That's cool. Yeah, pretty much. Like, when you send me a thing on, uh, you know, you're following me on Twitter, I was just like, why is that name sounds, like, so familiar? Because it has a little blurb. Says, oh, I did Call Girls of Cthulhu. Like, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, I like the look of your podcast. So I thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, yeah, no, I can I can attest to, like, you do a lot of, the stuff you talk about a lot is, like, micro-budgeting film and just making independent film. So that's something that I, that's near and dear to my heart. Oh, great. Yeah, that's uh, that's my life. Yeah, no, I used to work for uh, this one company called Troma. So, did um, you really? When did you work for Troma? Like 13 to 14, I worked on Return to Nukem High. Oh, that's awesome. So you might have uh, met our effects people who did the Call Girl of Cthulhu effect. Wait, who are the people that did the effects? Jason Cook and Kaylee Brown. I know Kaylee Brown. Like I've, I, I used to work with her. I was, uh, I worked in the special effects department. Yeah, Jason and Kaylee did the effects for um, two of our movies, and then Kaylee did the effects for. Actually, they did the effects for three of our movies. One of them has one effect. So Kaylee also did the effects for um, a, a high school slasher flick we made called President's Day. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, she taught me actually how to make blood recipes. No way. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell her I say hi. Hi, Kaylee. I will. <laughs> yeah, I was like this. When I did it, I was like 16 turning 17. Wow. Like, it's like a very interesting story. So my uncle, uh, he uh, used to, like, way back in the early 90s, used to work for Troma. And that's how we found out about it. And I was, like, way back, like, talking, like, when Netflix first started streaming movies, that's when I started to, like, watch the movies. My parents were like, actually, my mom was like, don't watch these movies. <laughs> totally watch those movies. <laughs> so I became, like, a huge, like, trauma fan, like, just by happenstance that's or by great. meiosis. And it's really cool because what happened was I ended up, like, this is this is what I want to do for my birthday slash, like, I just turned a sophomore in high school. And this is what I want to do. So wow. I got on a plane. I stayed there. We literally stayed in like a funeral home. <laughs> I was there for like two or three weeks doing all this. And every second I loved, oh my God, it's like, I think about it like every day and all the stupid shit that I got away with. <laughs> that sounds awesome. You guys all collectively stayed in a funeral home? Oh yeah. It was like in Buffalo, New York, the rumor had it that the mob owned this like funeral home. Oh man, that's great. So Jimmy, I heard that you just finished uh, a new movie. Yeah, we finished um, our seventh feature. It's called What Happens Next Will Scare You. We, we, we just finished uh, Wrapped Shooting, but it's still being edited right now. Okay, so you just finished Principal. Yes, exactly. So you've done about seven films. Compared to your first film to now, what has been something that you've like really have improved on? Or like You look back at your first film like, this is amazing, but now you look back at seven films later and you're just like, yeah, amazing, question mark. They're kind of all apples and oranges and by that i mean they're all very different situations and so the negatives that for each one the things that didn't go as planned they're all for very unique reasons that may not have happened no matter what on any of the other movies does that make sense 
Oh, yeah, like, no, like, every time being on a film, or even, because I do a lot of theater stuff, just behind the scenes, every, the show will always go wrong. Oh, yeah, Murphy's Law. What we got a lot better what, at was the writing, and we go to these film festivals all over the country, and we watch people watch our movies. And uh, you can only learn so much about screenwriting without actually seeing your work be brought to life. So when you bring it to life, you start to learn some other things that aren't working that you thought were working on the page, but it's just kind of like little subtle things like uh, we have a rule now, the two-minute rule. If a scene goes longer than two minutes, people in the, in the audience will start looking at their watches. Even if what's going on on screen is good, it's just the attention spans are so short. That's not something I would have learned without bringing our stuff to life. The other thing that we got good at is um, telling a marketable story. So when we would, when we first started our first movie, like you can't describe it in a sentence because it's not a marketable story. Like it's not commercial. And we quickly learned that in order to, you know, for a film to get legs and, and, you know, gain attention and get into festivals and just be, get the general public interested, it's got, you got to be able to sell it in like a sentence, you know, and high concept, things like that. Uh, those are things when we first started out, we didn't think about at all. Deciding whether this was a movie we were going to make, the marketability aspect of it was not the first thing on our minds. And now it absolutely is. It starts with the title. We even we will not even do anything until we have a good title. So I would say that's the number one thing that's changed. Sweet. So Jimmy, do you, what is your experience with the goosebumps and like spooky horror so of Oral Stein? When I was younger, I definitely read goosebumps a lot especially in like fourth fifth grade that was my peak for goosebumps i was reading it all the time and then it definitely inspired my first short stories that i wrote were short horror stories i had this series we had it in fifth grade i don't know if you had this kind of stuff in your school but in fifth grade we had an entire half hour every day um, where kids got up and read their stories to try to motivate you to write something that you felt was worth sharing and to get that experience of feedback. We don't have that. I have a feeling that if we did that now, it would just be people talking about their fa weird, creepy fan fictions. <laughs> no, I'm talking like fifth grade, <laughs> fifth grade class. That, that does, it doesn't change anything now. That's how I learned I wanted to like write screenplays because I got up there and I would be like, okay, I want people to like go gross and like I want people to cringe and go oh, gasp. And so I, I would get up there and I would like describe like roaches crawling all over the body and then like the kids would go ooh and I just ate it up. I loved it and I, I learned, you know, I learned I had this series called The Ghoulish Gobbler, which now talking about marketing, I would totally turn that into like a Frankenstein's monster version of like a, a a Thanksgiving turkey, but uh, <laughs> but like it totally wasn't that like because I wasn't obviously I was ten years old I wasn't thinking that way I I couldn't speak to it well now but I definitely read them fourth and fifth grade I was reading a lot of Goosebumps ninety ninety one I just revisited because I have this um, I've got like five different horror movies I want to write about that take place in malls because I worked in the mall for like 17 years. Oh, like the good old like chopping mall. Oh yeah, and... totally. I love chopping mall. And well, like the funny thing is, is like for me, cause I live in LA, I used to go to that mall all the goddamn time. <laughs> so like, it's like, I just think of, Oh, look, this is where they filmed commando and chopping mall. Not it's a mall. <laughs> Same as how like the closest nerdy mall that I live near is the point of Hills mall. So back to the future is like everywhere near where I live. Oh wow. I didn't even think about that being in LA and seeing like all of those locations that you're like, oh, that's in this movie. And that. But I just recently revisited, not Goosebumps, but a Bone Chillers. No! <laughs> yeah, I just saw, and I saw it, you just tweeted a review of a Bone Chillers, and I was like, that's so funny. I just finished a Bone Chillers two nights ago called Beware of the Shopping Mall. Have you read that one? No, I don't think I have. Dude, it's good. I mean, you know, it's a kid's book, but it, it's really, it's a lot of fun. I won't spoil it for you, Ben. So the reason I brought you on, Jimmy, is we're going to be playing a Give Yourself Goosebumps. So I'll be reading the book and you'll be making the choices. Gosh, Are you okay is, with that? This is so great. I saw that you just did an episode with the Indiana Jones Choose Your Own Adventures. I used to go to the library every day in elementary school 
and pick up one of those. I definitely did every single one that our library had in elementary school. My mom who lets me watch who would let me watch rated R movies, she was not she did not censor violence or, you know, many things from us. But for some reason she was super weird about these Indiana Jones choose your own adventure books. <laughs> was she afraid that you were gonna like open up the Ark of the Covenant yeah. and your face was just gonna melt off? I just don't know. Like, uh, but but like she legit was like, you need to stop reading these choose your own adventure. <laughs> 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 like, it's such a strange thing to be worried about. But yeah, so I am very familiar with the choose your own adventure book. I didn't tell you which one we were doing, and I thought because there was a you like movies and like me, and we're gonna be reading. Invaders from the big screen. Oh, that's awesome. Is it like a horror version of Last Action Hero? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that sounds cool. Why don't you describe the cover for all of us? Uh, it is a crowd of people who are watching the, a movie jumping back as a giant, like, King Kong type thing is ripping through the screen toward them. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great wow. thing. <laughs> this is awesome. Reader, beware. You choose the scare. So are you, are you ready to hear the back for yeah. to set up a little bit? Your friend Laura gets a little freaked out by horror movies, but you tell her just to cover her eyes if she gets scared. After all, it's only a movie, right? Wrong. <laughs> if you watch Going Apes in Blastovision, a giant ape will reach through the screen and pull you into the movie. If you watch Agent Z vs. Dr. Aqua, you'll find yourself swimming with half-alligator mutants. If you decide to see House of Hundred Horrors, you could be counting your last hours on Earth. I love it. Reader beware. Choose your own scare. (laughs) Oh man, I think I'm going to have to go with House of Hundred Horrors. (laughs) Which, so if you were like stuck in one of your own movies, which one would you not want to be in? Ooh, not want to be in. I definitely wouldn't want to be in the first one. The first one, Book of Lore, takes place in this town that is, like, plagued by this serial killer who stole a bunch of babies um, in the name of Satan, like, 20 years ago. Basically, there's a bunch of local legends, not your standard urban legends, um, urban legends that are unique to the town. And every single location in the town has a creepy story of something that'll happen if you go there. And so I basically wouldn't be want to be stuck in that town because like people are dying all the time through real and supernatural uh, events. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I wouldn't want to be stuck in the town of Laytonsville. It's a fictional town that uh, comes back in many of our movies. Finally, you step out of the ticket window. You feel as if your friend Laura has been standing in line for the multiplex all day. As usual, you spend the entire time arguing about which movie to see. Laura is nervous about seeing House of a Hundred Horrors. She, she's the kind of movie wimp going ape in Blastovision is another possibility. A movie about a giant ape trained for combat games would be cool, especially since the ads promise that Blastovision makes you feel as if you're really in the movies. <laughs> but waiting... But waiting for your favorite superhero, Agent Z, battling the evil villain Dr. Aqua might be a good choice, too. Unfortunately, there's going to be, like, seven sequels planned in this, like, Dr. Aqua expanded universe. (laughs) So, what will it be? The woman says behind the window, asks. You turn to Laura. Okay, you announce. Time's up. You have to choose. Laura rolls her eyes. You pick. You decide you've always hate movies like... Oh, you always hate the movies I like anyways. But just what you hope she would say, but now it's up to you. So do you want to see Going Ape and Blastovision, Agent Z versus Dr. Aqua, or House of a Hundred Horrors? Definitely House of a Hundred Horrors. Is it because of the title? Oh yeah, definitely. (laughs) You head for the theater showing House of a Hundred Horrors. Are you sure you want to see this, Laura asks nervously. It's kind of scary. The scarier, the better. You give Laura a wicked grin. Anyway, you add reassuringly, it's just a movie. If you wimp out, just cover your eyes. You reach for the door when a hand grabs your shoulder. Where do you think you're going? A voice says behind you demand. You roll (laughs) around and a little old lady stands in front of you. Where do you think you're going? The woman says. Without these! She hands you a pair of 3D glasses. Awesome. They'll make you see the movie... More real. Cool, you exclaim. <laughs> you've always wanted to see a 3D movie. What, you've, you've never seen a 3D movie before, kid? 
<laughs> when was the first time you saw a 3D movie? Oh, def- uh, Freddy 6. Oh, oh, that's that's a good one. I think the first one that I, I remember seeing in theaters was Spy Kids 3 Game Over. Oh, that's good. That was, I bet that was fun. Yeah, and I'll, I'll never forget, I took my glasses off just out of curiosity, and I was like, oh my god, it hurts so bad. Well, for um, me, I, it sucks because I wear glasses already, so putting glasses over your glasses suck. That's why if James Cameron actually invents, like, you know, watching 3D movies without 3D glasses, I'm sure my head will just explode at that point because I can never watch a 3D movie in peace. <laughs> I'm not a fan of them, though, because they give me headaches. So I'm, I'm one of those people who every time, no matter what, I'll get a headache. It's just the way I'm wired. For me, it's always, every time I see a 3D movie, I just get disappointed because it's like, why did I pay extra money to see this in 3D? Gotcha. Yeah. Like, the last movie I saw in 3D was Clash of the Titans, and I was just like, this movie wasn't made in 3D, they just put 3D in it. Yeah, the post-conversion is so crazy. You and Laura put on the glasses, you turn back to thank the woman, she's gone! Bum, bum, bum! Well, that's because she walked away, she gave you her glasses, and the job is to give people more glasses. You're not that smart. <laughs> you and Laura scurry into the seats in the front row. Why are you in the front row, you idiot? <laughs> with three, with for a three D movie. <laughs> yeah, for a three D movie, it's always like middle row, like five seats to the back to the like middle, because that's normally where they, uh, the projection, like the people that do the sound, that's where they normally sit, <laughs> syncing the mute, like um, adjusting the sound. I'm waiting. I'm very excited to hear what comes next. Spooky music fills the theater Ooh. as the movie begins. Ooh. Awesome. The glasses do make the Haunted Mansion look real. They're not headphones. They're not going to make it sound better. <laughs> you feel as if you could touch the, the gnarled, twisted bushes and step onto the creepy old porch. The movie's about a pair of twins, Wendy and John. You have to come visit their Aunt Kitty. What? Okay. Oof. No one has seen her in many years. You wonder, you think. You would want to hang out around an o- ugly old place, but the perfect setting for a scary movie? You feel Laura shiver behind you. I feel like it's like one of those old really shitty like B-movies. <laughs> or there's just like a skeleton pops out. <laughs> or like what they show like on like horror movies of people getting like the really fake like shocky movies. Yeah. <laughs> John reaches the, in the front door. It swings open by itself. And at that moment, it, the twins step inside. The door shuts behind them. They frantically rattle the doorknob. Locked! Big surprise, you mutter. You know how these movies work. Oh my god, this is... Is this like Jonah? <laughs> J- Jonah? Aunt Kitty, Wendy calls. Aunt Kitty, where are you? Uh, she and her brother try to pry open the door. No luck. Furious John pounds the door. Besides, the door with his fist. The wall shifts under his hand. Uh, he stumbles forward into blackness. Help, he cries. Something's sucking me in. So I guess you're being sucked into the movie? Into the movie. I mean, I've been to Disneyland a bunch of times and gone to like the, like the the when they had like Captain EO and stuff. Yeah. This is just like that. John must have hit a secret panel. You grin. No haunted house is complete without one. <laughs> your 3D glasses make it seem as if you're falling with them. Laura must have the same feeling. She's le- leaning forward in her seat, just like you, falling, falling. Then suddenly, it's not just a feeling anymore. You're really falling. Then suddenly, it's just a feeling anymore. You tumble forward. With, a, with such a force that you hit the ground with a hard thud. Laura lands behind you. You sit up totally embarrassed. Everyone in the audience must think you and Laura are complete geeks to get into this movie. What? Yes. Yeah, I've, uh, you've just bent reality and people think you're total dorks. <laughs> you aren't in the theater. No audience. No movie screen. No popcorn. A container or soda cans littering the aisles. Nothing. Just damp, musty, smelly darkness. I would not want to be in a horror movie. I feel like if I was to be in, like, if I got sucked into a movie, I want to be either, like, in, like, a romantic comedy or, like, an actually funny Adam Sandler movie. But that's never going to happen, so. (laughs) Did you see um, Final Girls? I think, yeah, wait, is that the full moon one I'm thinking? No, that's Last Girl. No. Final Girls is uh, a bunch of people, they get sucked into a slasher movie. Oh, yes, I have seen that. 
It's very good. I really enjoyed it. I think my favorite one of those is actually Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh man, I I'm a terrible horror fan. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's it's um, so good because it's just about like the hillbilly like wrong turn horror trope. <laughs> That's great. That's good. I also recommend if you haven't watched The Barn, and it's a really beautiful, really well shot movie, and it's really funny. That's great. Um, where are we? Laura asked in a shaky voice. What happened? I don't know. Maybe we fell into the basement under the movie screen. What? I. Can you confirm there are like basements under movie screens? Uh, it might. Maybe. Maybe it's an East Coast thing. We have basements here pretty much everywhere. Oh God! This is, that's there's a movie for you. The basement under the movie theater. A rustling sound makes your spine tingle. Where are you? You aren't alone. Who's there? You call. Before you can hear an answer, Laura grabs your arm. She shrieks in terror. Eee! God, she's the first person to die. First kill. Well, so far, there aren't any choices. This is like an actual movie. Yeah, I'm. I've I've made one choice, <laughs> and it was I chose to this particular movie. <laughs> yeah, because I think what the only movie that's ever done that really is Clue. Where you actually pick the ending. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Laura screams. It's them. How can they be? Oh, you cry. Laura's freaked out as she digs her nails into your arm. You have to pry her fingers off before she turns to see where she is pointing. Your mouth drops open in shock. Now you understand why Laura is cowering beside you. Standing in front of you are the twins, John and Wendy. Only they aren't images from the movie screen. They're real. As real as you or Laura. Ooh. I feel like this is like some like really weird like retro 70s movie where all the kids just have like weird bowl haircuts. <laughs> it's hard to believe there's... Uh, only one explanation for what is ex- uh, what what you're experiencing. Somehow, you fell into the movie. No, I have a better explanation. I think I know what happened. It's the never-ending story. Ah, uh, did they? Uh, have they given me another choice yet? Uh, they don't give you choices in the never-ending story, except for the sadness swamp. Who are you? John demands. What have you done with Aunt Kitty? What? So now they're they're giving you the fifth degree. <laughs> Why did you lock us in the house? He, his twins yell. Whoa, slow down. You hold up your hands to stop their accusations. Oh my god, I just did that like a pantomime then. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you quickly explain about the movie and the 3D glasses. Finally, the twins believe you. So, like, I know this is going to sound crazy, but me, you guys aren't actually existing in my plane of existence. And you guys are all, like, uh, big money. Like, a bunch of people in, like, a committee decided that we're going to make this movie with jump scares. So, um, I'm sorry to prove that your existence is wrong, but we have these cool, like, cardboard 3D glasses. (laughs) I'm sure Aunt Kitty does. If you help us find her, we'll help you get your way back home. Laura raises an eyebrow. You know that expression, this means she isn't sure what to do? Maybe you should figure out how to get uh, on your own. After all, this movie is probably all about terrible things that happen while the twins search for their aunt. But you don't know if you're really able to open the panel without help. What should you do? So should you try to find Aunt Kitty? Or do you want to just get out of there? Uh, let's get out of there. I feel like you're just going like, to walk two feet and there's going to be the old man there. You're all doomed. Yeah. Yes. You got my like, crazy <laughs> Ralph. We're kind of in a hurry, you tell the twins. I think we'd better just stick... To finding the glasses. <laughs> That's what it says. That's what I say. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of in a hurry. <sighs> uh. <laughs> wow, you're a dick. First, I didn't see the movie that the girl wanted to see with me. And now I'm telling these twins I don't really care I mean, about what they... I mean, it's probably like it could have been worse. Like you could have seen like an Adam, Sad- Adam Sandler comedy. Like get, just imagine like stuck in pixels. I just feel like I'm out of here, guys. That would be horrendous, being stuck in pixels. Or, like, trying to be, like, stuck in, like, Annabelle Creations. Oh, God, the movie was awful. I didn't see it. You're not I missing much. It. Except a bunch <laughs> of kids making fun of another kid that has polio. Uh, you gaze at Laura. Now what, you mutter. Laura stares at the wall. I think I see the outline of a secret panel. Maybe we can get to it, open it somehow. You and Laura set to work, trying to reopen the panel. You are interrupted by some... Uh, the sound of footsteps behind you. Have the twisted twins returned? Aunt Kitty or Laura crutches your arm in fear. 
Slowly you turn around. Do you dare to turn around, Jimmy? I do dare to turn around. Now, would a character in your movie dare to turn around? Some of them. (laughs) You let a a sigh of relief. The person approaching you is just a frail old man. He wears a long overcoat and funny tie. No, run away, children. You're you're right. (laughs) Here he comes. Run away. Just like a disclaimer, I don't read these books before. So I'm just as surprised as you. You need to help, youngsters, he calls. Yes, you re- you reply. We dropped something on the other side of this panel. Do you know how to open the door? No one wants to know better than I, the old man declares. I built this house brick by brick. Back then, they didn't used to call me old man man. I was called young man man. <laughs> <laughs> no one would want to know better than I. Do you know how to get uh, back to the movie theater, Laura asks, hopefully. The man snorts. <laughs> Movies? Those new fangled inventions? Just a fad. Won't last. And noisy. Interrupts my rust. Have that movie theater da- door keeps me up. What? This, uh, okay. You and Laura grin at each other. Great. You'll be on your way home any minute. With one sharp tap, the old man opens the panel. There they are, your glasses. You and Laura grab them. Now follow me, the old man inter- <laughs> instructs you. Oh, great. Now you're going to follow this creepy old man. What is it with, like, these choosing your adventures and being like, yes, follow the creepy old man. He's got puppies and candy. <laughs> right. Hey, you exclaim. Why are you going underground? Shortcut, the man explains. We'll come out in the my room. Nope, nope, nope. Just leave right now. He said my room. His room. Let's go to his, let's go to the creepy old man's room. And then the movie theater is right next door. <laughs> Don't worry, Laura assumes. Uh, these weird old houses often have tunnels. The old men's room? Hmm. Can't say I can think of those old man houses. And for, like, a newfangled thing as, as a movie, I would imagine that, you know, he might not have a movie theater in his house he built. Yeah, exactly. You shrug and keep going. The farther you walk, the darker the tunnel becomes. A terrible smell hangs in the air. Finally, the path begins to climb upwards again. The old man reaches overhead. With a loud grunt, he shoves open a trapdoor. You scramble all into the tunnel. It's a crypt. Ah. I feel like we're going to get some tales. From this old man. Is he going to say, come along, kitties? <laughs> <gasps> you gasp in terror. Coffins lie scattered around you. Cobwebs hang in the ceiling. And is that a sk- sk- skeleton? Welcome to my home, the old man cackles. He shuffles over to the trap door and slams it shut. Then he pushes a large coffin over it now if only that movie theater weren't so noisy he grumbles i'll be able to get plenty of rest you stare at him as he fades away into the mere outline then vanishes into the coffin you and laura shriek and run to the door huge chains hang hang padlocks across it it looks as if you're gonna miss the end of the movie well actually this is the end of the movie and you the end what? That's how it ends? Yeah, you are he's not starved to death. <laughs> Man. Well luckily you get a second try, so would you wanna find another movie or do you wanna go with the kids? Go with the kids. So that's my VCR like rewinding sound. Nice. Haven't thought haven't found a sound effect for that that works. Cobwebs cling to the frames you shudder you wonder if these people fell into the house like you have never got out you arrive at a crumbling staircase leading down do you know where that goes you ask the twins before you can answer you hear a noise behind you what's that you cry whirling around then you laugh the sound uh, that scared you just the thump 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 of a large bouncing ball you're about to make a joke when you realize that there's something terrifying about the ball. No one's bouncing it! Uh, jump scare number 85 of a new movie. Nice. Yeah. Laughter. Uh, Laura drags you to the staircase. Let's go, she utters, before the bouncing ball bounces over here. But maybe you could try to catch the ball, find out where it came from. Or maybe you should stick with the plan and find Aunt Kitty. So do you want to 
catch the ball or run down the stairs? Run down the stairs, definitely. Do do do, and he's just like like synth music's playing. Do 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 do. The bouncing ball gives you the creeps. You dash down the stairs. Only the stairs aren't there anymore. Your feet fly out from under you as you reach the wooden railing. It crumbles into dust in your hands. You you slide down a slick, flat surface into complete darkness. Is this like the Adams Family now? You've just fell into a staircase? Crash, you land on a pile of metal. Mm. You grunt as the twins slam on top of you. Ouch, Laura... Uh, bangs into the twins. I've had enough rides for one day, you mutter, picking yourself up off the floor again. Now, where are we? Laura wails. You stare at the pile of metal on the floor. Armor, you gaze around. You've seen rooms like these before in books and movies. I think we're in some kind of dungeon, you reply. There's a dungeon in this creepy house? Isn't this somehow in the movie theater, too? No, you got sucked into the movie. Sucked into the movie, and this guy said that he's somehow connected to the movie theater with the, with his house, though. I remember that. I guess, yeah. It's kind of like like, like, like like Last Action Hero. <laughs> yeah. Which, I didn't hate that movie. I, no, I actually like that movie. It, gets, it doesn't get much love, but I like it. I don't it. get why it doesn't get much love. It's just making fun of action movies. It's got the Circuit City kid. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think my favorite joke of that is when he's trying to convince Arnold Schwarzenegger that like he's an actual like actor. So they go to the video store to look for Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, and then they have the um, the Sylvester Stallone in Terminator Two: Judgment Day. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I just love that joke, and just I wonder if like yeah, Sylvester good. Stallone has like that cut out. Yeah, that's a good prop to have. It's out there somewhere. I mean, if Arnold Schwarzenegger can own and operate a fully armed and functional tank, I'm pretty sure Sylvester Stallone. Has a cardboard cut out of himself and as the Terminator. <laughs> Good question. You begin. A loud screeching noise interrupts you, uh, like the sound of fingernails on a chalkboard. Whatever is making the noise is coming closer. Turn to page oh. fifteen. You dash to a stone archway. You peek out to try to discover what is making that awful sound. Weird, you murmur. A suit of cl- armor clanks down the hall. You turn around to the twins. Uh, guys. Any reason a knight in armor would be roaming around down here? Laura snickers. Do you think Aunt Kitty is dressed in a suit of armor? Did did did, did you see the armor? Armor. John stammers. You don't like how scared he sounds or how pale his face suddenly is. We've heard terrible stories, Wendy wails from the corner, about an empty suit of armor searching for a body. Is this like Sleepy Hollow now? Is he looking for his head? Is it Christopher Walken? Actually, I'd pay money to see Christopher Walken in a suit of armor. Empty. How can an empty suit of armor get around, you wonder? We don't know it's empty, you point out. You peek around the archway again. Laura uh, squeezes be- besides you. The knight stands in the hall. Slowly, he turns his head. You figure he's trying to decide which way to go. Then he notices his visor's up, and inside is a face. There's nothing there! Uh. <laughs> Like I feel like I should just get like a like a flashlight and just put it over my like like, a, like an up angle and I'll just pretend that I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Empty you murmur. Yikes. Laura squeals. Zoinks. The armor freezes, the visor snaps down with a click. Smart move you mutter. It it heard you. Now it's now it knows where we are. You're exactly right. The suit of armor slowly turns its head and it's straight for you. But 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 it's just an empty suit of armor, Laura stammers. It can't hurt us. <laughs> yeah, right, you murmur sarcastically. Just like it can't walk, we better move it. If we don't get out of here fast, that armor is going to have four bodies to choose from. Ours! You dart across the room to a thick wooden table with all four of you t- uh, tugging to manage to get it open. Once inside, you shove the door shut. Now you all can do is hope the armor gives up on you. See, this is where like it has like Terminator and like like ye olde Terminator vision. I can't even think of like a funny like clever way of like doing like medieval music, but plays like, <laughs> like a lute. Do 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 do. Sounds like video game music. <laughs> Art thou, John Connor? <laughs> 
Uh, I actually probably would watch the Terminator version of that. Actually, then again, there is um, In the Name of the King. The Transformers. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's horrible. Gazing around, you realize that the room isn't completely empty. A large dresser stands up against the far wall. Let's check it out. You all cross the dresser. They're letting out the middle drawer. You whip around the dirt and read the words around Helter Skelter. God damn it. Yes, of course the dresser has to say Helter Skelter. You know, now I know what the soundtrack is. The soundtrack is legitimately like Mer- like Charles Manson's like music. <laughs> Which they did. Fun fact, they made a Charles Manson movie when he was being in uh, getting his trial. And the soundtrack was literally Charles Manson's music. Oh, wow. What's that called? I think it was called Helter Skelter. Oh, that's that movie. Okay. So, like, as he's, like, in prison and stuff, they, like, they illegally used his music. Living it alone, everything in this place is too weird, but you can't resist. You slowly pull open the drawer, and you fumble around until you feel around for something smooth. You wrap your fingers around it and pull it out. A key! Laura exclaims. She takes it from you. Maybe it's the key to where Aunt Kitty is. John suggests, check the drawer again. No, Laura objects. We should just keep searching for Aunt Kitty. I think that armor has given up on us. We might as well find something else we'll need, Wendy agrees, or something deadly. Laura um, counters. All three of them stare at you. What should you do? So, 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 yeah. So, did you search the drawer again, or do you want to try to leave the room? Leave the room. I'm always trying to leave. What happens, like, when the movie, like, the movie ends? Are you, like, stuck there permanently? Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> Laura's right, you tell the twins. We better not press our luck. The twins grumble a bit, but then they agree you should get back to searching for Aunt Kitty. You pull the door open with a crack. The coast is clear. The dungeon is too creepy, you say. Let's find a way up back upstairs, you agree, Laura says. Wendy and John nod. Easier said than done. You wander from uh feels like hours until even finding a staircase you have to keep up and lock look out the empty suit of armor luckily it clanks so loudly that you can hear it coming uh, before <laughs> it finds you you duck around the corner you keep your you keep out of sight there has to be a way out you complain you keep your voice low so the armor doesn't hear you yes it's clearly got ears <laughs> Now in the crazy house, Laura grumbles. You sigh and lean against the wall. Look out, John shouts. Bum, 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 bum. This is great. <laughs> I especially like the bum, 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 bum. <laughs> I'm like just thinking like now it's like like all the fight music is like old like Star Trek. With the same like awful fight choreography. John reaches for your arm and yanks you forward. You're almost fell on into an Iron Maiden, he cries, pointing behind you. Oh, what? Laura asks. John explains that the Iron Maiden is an ancient torture device in a kick-ass metal band. You stare <laughs> at the coffin-shaped box. It's lined with sharp metal spikes inside. Anyone shut inside there would be pierced right through, you shudder. Let's get out of here, you urge, backing away from the Iron Maiden. Nice. The fateful words. Let's get out of here. No, the fateful words are, hey guys, let's split up and search for clues. Ah, yes, yes, yes. But how, Laura demands. We've been searching and searching for a way out. Nothing. A voice from be- above makes you jump. If you're getting upstairs is what you'd like, it's a no- it announces, climb in the box, and but avoid the spikes. Oh, I... Can't deny this man is probably God telling us to kill ourselves. <laughs> Wendy points a shaking finger above the Iron Maiden. A parrot, you exclaim. You stare up at the birdcage swing above the ceiling. What's the parrot going to do? What is anything going to do down here, Laura comments. More important, John adds. Why is it telling you to get inside the Iron Maiden to go upstairs? Yes, let's follow this foul pheasant. If you're going to climb upstairs, what you'd like, the parrot repeats. Climb into the box, but avoid the spikes. You have, you stare in the Iron Maiden. Get in there, you exclaim. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> the parrot mocks you. You're crazy, you shout at the parrot. I'm not getting in there. You're crazy. You're crazy. The parrot squawks. Wait, Laura interrupts. 
Maybe there is another way to get inside the Iron Maiden. You stop yelling at the parrot and stare at the Iron Maiden. The four of you examine the deadly box. You discover a small handle on the side. You yank it open. All of you see is black. Should you go in? Laura asks shakily. Your palms sweat as you think about the shop metal spikes. Either the Iron Maiden will be the way upstairs or you'll turn into a big piece of Swiss cheese. What do you do? So do you want to climb into the Iron Maiden or do you want to keep searching? We are not climbing into the to the Iron Maiden. Um, we're gonna keep searching. Like you just hear like a faint like run to the hills. That's definitely my theme. No way I'm getting into that thing, especially not from the advice of a stupid parrot. You slam the back panel shut again. Let's keep looking. You all head back to the stone corridor and walk into an empty suit of armor. Oh no! You gasp as you take a step backwards and stumble into Laura. She trips and crashes into the twins the four of you land on a heap of cold stone bodies the suit of armor announces howly the bodies have been su- seeking no way metalhead <laughs> bye everybody i'm gonna go crash out my window right now <laughs> no way metalhead <laughs> you leap out and shove the suit of armor as hard as you can it clatters to the floor as it struggles to, use- to stand up laura and the twins dash back into the room with the Iron Maiden, you hear the suit of armor clinking down the hallway. Uh, it must have managed to st- stand back up. No time to lose. You yank open the door onto the side of the coffin-like box and dive into the Iron Maiden. You brace yourself into the sharp metal pieces. Nothing. Instead of uh, piercing pain, you feel a cool breeze coming from above you. Uh, that means you've opened to somewhere overhead. You feel around carefully into the blackness. You don't want to go to get spiked. What you discover is that the Iron Maiden is built into the wall, the opening you crawled into from the front narrow staircase. Come on, you call. The parrot was right. This does lead upstairs. Oh my god, you're a bunch of idiots. The four of you carefully make your way up to this tiny winding staircase. At the top of the trap door, you climb out and find yourself into a dusty hallway lined with uh, tall wooden doors. You dash over to the first door and turn the knob. Locked. Laura and the twins start try opening doors. They're all locked. God, like this, this, this look is like an awful horror movie. <laughs> it is called The House of a Hundred Horrors. Is, am I about to see like Steven S. Pumpkins? Great, John grumbles. Aunt Kitty could be behind one of those doors when we can't get her. Maybe we can, Laura pipes up. She pulls a, a, a key out of her pocket. The key from the Helter Skelter drawer. Uh, but which door, Wendy asks. There are dozens of them. You scan the hallway and point to three doors at the end. Those are the only doors that take an old-fashioned key like this one, you state. Great, that... That narrows it down, Laura says, but which one sh- should we try? You approach the doors with old-fashioned lock. A large sign hangs above. You gulp as you read out. Behind these doors, danger lurks. You notice each door has a faint inscription. One of the doors says playtime. The middle door says musical interlude. And the last door says portraits. Hmm. They don't sound very scary, Laura holds the key. Which door should we try? Say them again. I saw our portraits, musical what? Uh, musical interlude and playtime. Oh, we definitely don't want playtime. Um, uh, let's do musical interlude. I'm trying to survive here, man. See, this is, this is it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Like every time, like first they wanted you to basically jump into an Iron Maiden. I'm pretty sure like if you were to jump into it, it actually would have been like a real Iron Maiden. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm trying to. Sur- I'm trying to be the character in the horror movie that survives. You want to be the so final let's... boy? Yeah, yeah, the final boy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a wife and kids. Kill them. <laughs> what could be dangerous about a musical interlude? You say. You enter the room and discover a large grand piano playing itself. It's probably playing like Moon Moonlight Sonata. Oh, that's perfect. God damn it! You have to play before the spikes come down. You know what became a Jill sandwich. No big deal, you declare. I've seen player pianos before. Not like this one, Laura points the keyboard. She's right. Instead of black and white keys, this piano has black and white teeth. Ooh, that's actually... Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's kind of like the Goonies. Like, the... the, Actually, I think that's even creepier with, like, the teeth. Yeah. Check this out, John calls. He stands by a row of doors numbered one to through five. And this... Wendy holds a piece. Oh my god, this is the Goonies. And this, Wendy holds up a piece of sheet music. I bet it's some kind of clue. 
how can it be a clue, you argue? Just musical notes. You're the one who took the piano lessons. Oh my god, this is the Goonies. Yeah. This is legitimately the Goonies. You're the only one who took piano lessons, Laura responded. You figure it out. You study the music carefully. I think the notes spell out the words you suggest. If we play them correctly, Laura nods at the piano. Go for it, maestro. If you if you only practice more. Oh my god, they're ripping off the goonies. No! <laughs> oh no, this sucks. There's actually a picture for this. It's musical oh, wow. notes. I can't read music, so luckily for you, it's easy. You think that they spell dead face, turn the page 133. You think they spell faded age, turn the page 32. Because I like their musical notes, so I guess you would translate it. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I can't see it. Oh, uh, this is going to be... No, it's just like, legitimately just like musical notes. Oh, okay. Um, dead face. Let's do dead face. Are you ready? I'm ready. So like, just like a pitch, like, you're, like this is like the Goonies. Now this is the Goonies. You sit at the piano. You take a deep breath. You cautiously put your fingers onto the keys. Uh, teeth. You play the notes. D, E, A, D, F, A, C. Ah! You shriek as the piano teeth chomp down on your fingers. All five doors burst open. Instruments tumble out, attacking Laura and the twins. The pianos chew its way up your arms. A tuba swallows Laura. A harp slices through John with its string. <laughs> A violin blow. Uh, saws Wendy in half. Yep, you should have been paying more attention during those music lessons. You can't spell the end. Oh my god, that's so metal! Uh, that was a great ending. That was a great ending. I, I mean, we died, but we died in a very memorable fashion. Uh, and, and pretty gory for a kid's book. Wow. The sad thing is, like, it's... I'm just thinking, like, over-the-top gore, too. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. Like I just like like buckets of blood. <laughs> blood squirting all over the little kids as they their arms are swallowed and the one girl sh- sliced in half. Wow. Oh wow. Well, that was a that was a very satisfying ending. Even though I didn't survive, I'm kind of. Oh no, you don't survive. You just you just die a little better each time. You die a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> There's like one like you decide not to like go on the spooky adventure and this like wow you're a dork. The end. <laughs> I think it's like Batwing Hall. There's like one where you legitimately like, I guess I'll stay home today and do my homework. You can choose not to do it. <laughs> yeah. To go on the scary adventure. That's cool. But yeah, so what did you think of this book? Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. They, uh, I, I thought it was more challenging than I had expected. But yeah, and I, and I really liked the ending. That was great. <laughs> I think it's scarier when you don't know like the outcome so you can't like really flip like you know, people cheat and like you flip the page to see if it's the end like i don't want to pick that yeah. one i mean i totally used to do that when i was little see all the yeah 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 definitely like i used to read all the endings first before i read the book i thought for sure that we'd have more choose your own and en- choose your own adventure movies by now but that hasn't uh that hasn't taken off. I thought with the advent of DVD and the remote control based viewing, um, that that would be a thing, but it, but it hasn't. Well, I know there's some, uh, cause I do a lot of conventions. There are like people that there are studios that specifically do choose your own adventure, like movies. And they're, oh, wow. they're very, I can't remember the name of the studio, but they're like, they're not, they're like middle budget, I'd say, but a lot of it is, um, it, the whole movie is a choose your own adventure. So you would pick all of them. I think, with like the advent of like VR technology, it'll be a lot easier. More more people will be interested in that. I got that. Like, I'd I got be you. more surprised. I'd love if they had like a VR like choose your own adventure game. That would be really cool. Kind of like, like, but then again, there's there are like mo- I'm doing quotation marks movies like Dragon's Lair. That's more of a video game, but it's certainly a movie. So I don't know that that's like they're interesting. Definitely. But I guess maybe it's just it's a hard concept. But now again, we're in the internet age and. Um, Everything's easier on the internet. Yeah. So, Jimmy, where can they find you? Where can people find me? Uh, I'm really active on Twitter. And uh, so you can find me at Jimmy R. George, Twitter um, backslash Jimmy R. George. I'm also in, on Instagram as underscore Jimmy George. And you can find me on Facebook. Just look me up. Uh, it's uh, facebook.com backslash Jimmy R. George. And then. Uh, if anybody out there is a screenwriter and looking for notes, that's what I do for a living. I am a script consultant. People give me their screenplays, and then um, I tell them how to 
tell the best version of the story they're trying to tell. What is some good advice? Like, what is like the golden piece of advice you should tell people should start before writing a screenplay or before or oh. like dur- during it? Uh, number one piece of advice is to reverse expe- expectation in a way that is um, organic to the story and not calculated and contrived. If you can reverse someone's expectation from A to Z in a story, you've you've succeeded. I mean, good stories are surprising from the moment they start to the moment they end. That is the number one piece of advice is to figure out how to keep your story surprising in a way that isn't like an anvil falls from the sky and crashes onto the killer. Like, and I don't mean, I don't just mean deus ex machina. I mean, a lot of the time. Like a bolt from the blue. Um, yeah, like just a lot. <laughs> a lot of the times the, the reversals of expectation don't work because they're not organic story they don't they don't make sense they don't feel like that is believable in the certain situation that the twist happened if you can find a way to reverse expectation like in every scene and that's an organic you've succeeded as a storyteller and that's like really difficult to do but that's the challenge yeah no it's always been that i think because people always like oh i know how this movie is gonna end like when i saw it i had someone like i remember they were like I knew there was going to be a sequel to this when it said, like, chapter one. I'm like, yes, it says chapter one. Like, yeah. like I read the book. I'm in the know. Even the the least intelligent audience member is still a really smart movie watcher. Oh, no, I love, like, really, like, not, not that I'm saying everyone's not smart, but, like, when, like, my, my favorite thing is to go with people that don't really know much about movies and that, that like, yeah, you know, I bet I could, like, predict this entire movie and then like watching their reactions like i'm like especially like watching a cookie cutter horror movie now because they're all very cookie cutter and like them getting like okay so when's it gonna happen when's it gonna happen like oh my god that was so scary and freaky like yes yes it is i'm looking at you annabelle creations sounds sounds like you're not a fan of jump scares i i hate jump kiss i hate jump scares i don't like the the uh the loud noise jump scares. I think there's definitely value in a good jump scare, and I and I don't mean. Well, no, the, there's plenty of good value in a good jump scare, but when the entire movie is built on a jump scare. Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm saying. Well, there's so many great ones. Like I think my favorite one is in Jaws when like the scuba diving and you see like the head pops out. Oh yeah, like, it's so they good. built it up for it to be a good jump scare. Suspense. Yeah, but there's not suspense. It's just like. The, it's the equivalent of like like jiggling keys in front of a person's face like really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you don't earn the jump scare. Yeah. I get really passionate about horror movies. So stuff, stuff yeah. like that. That's 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 good. I like that. What's uh what's So you, you did you like it? I love that movie. It was I think yeah, it was really it well paced. I like the only again the, there were some really funny jump scares in that, but I was like those were not meant for me. But the entire yeah. time I was laughing because I'm not afraid of clowns. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really well done. I think people's expectations, I think people need to manage their expectations. I hear a lot of people um, dogging on it. And, and, you know, everyone's entitled to, like, a negative opinion. Well, that's because they were like, dogging on it because apparently people are, like, fixated on why the child sex orgy wasn't in the movie. That's so weird to me. I mean, not that it wasn't in the movie, but that people are, like complaining about that i was just like it doesn't have to be in the movie it's not necessary they fix it in a really appropriate way yeah no so i really liked it um the crowd i was with didn't like it it was so funny there was there was a man sitting next to me and 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 then his girlfriend was getting scared at everything and grabbing him and he was like this is stupid (laughs) but i I mean i feel like the movies either made for people that are like truly terrified of clowns or people that want to watch like Stand By Me but with a clown. That's exactly what it is. Stand, yeah, I mean, he even said it was. I can't remember if he said, was did Stand By Me the story the short story come before it or after. I don't know. Well, okay, so it took him like four years to write, and I believe the short story was before that. Before it, so it was a warm up. The one thing that I love about movies is just the believability of the characters. Yeah. And that is one thing, like, I can believe these people are scared shitless by this by this clown that's hilarious. Oh, my God. Like, 
But I'm so happy that the part where like, he's dancing has become a meme. <laughs> like he's funny, terrifying. He's not like Tim Curry funny, but he's like funny in a like Bill Skarsgård. Oh my god, that guy. <laughs> that guy needs to win something. There's a whole second movie where he can do other stuff that's like becomes iconic. Yeah, like turn into a spider. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so where can they find your movies? We actually don't have a website for our production company, so. And distribution is a very complicated thing that, like, I don't even have copies that I can tell people, like, yeah, send me a message and I'll, and I can, you can buy it right from me because then we'll, we'll make the money. Um, Call Girl of Cthulhu is available pretty much anywhere. So, like, if you have a platform that you prefer to get movies on, you can find Call Girl of Cthulhu to rent or buy. WNUF is also available pretty much anywhere, but if you have Shudder, it's on Shudder. And, uh, yeah, Shudder rules. Oh, I love Shudder. That's where I actually watched Call Girls of Cthulhu. So if you haven't, hey, man, we'll check out WNUF. <laughs> um, that's on there. That's our, like, most popular movie. And it's it's just a movie, I think. It's our only movie that's not, that I think is accessible to any audience. Like, I think a kid could watch it. I think my grandmother could watch it. I think anyone could watch it. And it's, like, suitable. Yeah, so, and then uh, the movies before that, we made a movie called Witch's Brew, which is a killer beer movie. That is available on Amazon, and you can probably find it most places. It's not available to rent on many platforms, but you can rent it on Amazon. Um, None of these are on Netflix. We're not, they're really low-budget movies, and they don't hold up uh, production value-wise to uh, the Netflix standards. Um, Like, their technical standards, our movies wouldn't make the cut from the various things that you have to adhere to then before that we made a movie called president's day which i've talked about a little bit that's a high school slasher it's basically like a slasher version of election it's a fictional lincoln high school and it's during a high school election and someone dressed like um abe lincoln is killing off all the student council candidates i think you might have already sold me on this movie already dude it's really fun i'm really proud of it we shot in a catholic high school on summer vacation and we killed 19 people in the school um it's just it's a movie that shouldn't exist we made it for like five thousand. Oh, that's that's um, perfect um, dude it's insane and then before that we made an anthology flick it's really rough but it's a lot of fun called grave mistakes and then before that we made a movie the first movie i talked about that's like urban legends but all the urban legends you've never heard of before they're they're like we made them up and they're unique to this small town and there's this book that has all of these local legends from this haunted town and everyone is getting killed based on the legends out of this book that one's called book of lore book of lore and gray mistakes are on a dvd together but that dvd is out of print but you can find it on ebay and you can probably find it used on amazon but um it's out of print we're not going to get another distribution contract for that because it's like a dinosaur compared to the others that shot on a really um standard definition camera it was in like 2006 and 2007 it doesn't hold up production value-wise with the other ones, but uh, I'm really proud of them. They're all stepping stones to bigger things. Well, the way I look at it is every project you do is not more for profit, but more for experience. Absolutely, man. That's a good attitude. Cause That's a good attitude. Everything I do has been like, okay, I, this might be awful, but at least I know how not to do it again. Yeah, no, that's a great, that is a fantastic mindset. That'll that'll keep you going, man. So, and then what happens next will scare you. Being edited right now and hopefully we'll be finished in the spring, but there's definitely no way we'd, we won't finish by hopefully release it around Halloween next year. Ooh, um, spooky, ooh. scary. It's a clickbait horror satire. <laughs> um, it's basically like office full of like BuzzFeed employees. Um they are they are pitching their 13 scariest videos on the internet for a Halloween listicle. We made a bunch of faux YouTube clips that are um, in the movie pertain to be real. And so they're pitching it to their boss. And each one of the videos, the faux YouTube videos that we made, contains a... Uh, like a monster. Those will be the segments. And then... But it's a weird anthology movie because um, usually anthology flicks... Like Tales from the Dark Side, you know, all of those. The wraparound that connects it, the frame story, is like 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes shorter, like 10 minutes. And then the segments are what the movie is. The segments are like only 30 minutes of the movie because YouTube clips are really short. Yeah, like the most and like five minutes to like... To yeah, they're, they're between two and two and five and then we have one that's seven minutes, but 
the segments are like 30 minutes and then the wraparound is like a horror movie in itself. Um, it's like, it's like almost an hour long. One of the early vi videos unleashes all the evil from the other videos into the office as they're played. Well, hopefully, you know, we are able to see it very smoothly and with, you know, you're, are you going to be touring that on film festivals? I'm not sure. I can't say yet. Um, we're definitely, it's very expensive to go to festivals. Um, and by that, I mean, most of the festivals, the sub, just to submit is like $50. So you submit to 10 festivals, that's $500. You're competing against thousands of submissions, and most of those submissions have much higher production value than we do. We put these movies in these festivals, and we have like, you know, between a $5,000 budget to like 40, but most of our movies were made for between like two and $5,000. Uh, and uh, we're competing with like 250 grand to a million budget to 10 million budget. So it's really hard to compete with that. Well, I always recommend uh, if you haven't tried submitting to Troma Dance, they do that every year. And I, the submissions are free. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've had some friends who've had some shorts play at Troma Dance. That's really awesome. The free, the free submission is a rare thing. And I understand why the festivals do it. They have to pay for the theater. They have to pay for... You know, they have to pay for a lot of things. They have to pay for the marketing. So I get why they take submission fees. But, and it is ultimately about making money for these festivals. Tw if you submit to even like 20 festivals, that's $1,000 just to submit, you know, and, you, and, more, and more than likely you're not going to make it in. So we have to be really choosy. It, our, our most popular movie, WNUF, we finished it and missed most of the festival season. And so like it only played in like two or three festivals and yet it's our most popular one, whereas Call Girl of Cthulhu, it's, it's awesome that you saw it. And I, I love that that's how you discovered me, because that's not usually the case. Usually WNUF is how people discover me. But what's funny is Call Girl of Cthulhu, we, 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 it played in like 40 festivals and like all over the world. And yet, you know, not many people know that it exists. I think it's a really well-made, like cheesy, huh. like it's a great little not like i don't want to say popcorn flick but it's a nice like movie that you can watch with friends at a party and have yeah, a good laugh yeah it's fun it's fun yeah it's meant to be fun so i don't know if we'll put it into festivals i really don't and and the reason i say that is because we don't have any money in the bank and uh i mean like we don't have any money to submit it to festivals so i it's gonna be tough to make those decisions when it comes i would love to just submit to like 100 festivals but you know it comes to it's pretty much prioritizing what you want to do with it yeah well it's prioritizing is it how many how many screens are there is there one there's one screen over two days and it there so they're playing five movies so there's going to be a thousand submissions and they're going to pick five movies like i'm not sure if i want to give them fifty dollars yeah no i understand it's, what you're saying. it's things like that so it bums me out man because i love it to play in festivals all over the place but un unfortunately like that's the nature of the beast like things cost money cool thanks jimmy for um coming on the show and talking about film and just you know oh yeah man i had fun it was cool it's cool to it's cool to hear that you're an effects guy i love that that's awesome yeah no i love i love effects i love movies and like really waking up and being like yeah i get to like spray a wall of blood today yep yeah living the dream it's a hard that it's a hard job they have minimal chances to get their job right it's like very difficult and stressful yeah no when i was doing a uh, newcomb high i was i was because i was a pa i was just like in every department doing everything and anything so it's awesome i'm not saying i mean for some like for me the first day was the worst just because i had never worked that hard in my life it got better with each day and it just became like oh my god it was it was so amazing but if anyone like if anyone has not worked in the movie, my dear listeners over here, just look and you'll find like anyone's like, hey, guys, we're making this movie, just do it. It's you learn a lot very quickly. And yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's a very like learning job. So thanks, guys, for listening to this wonderful episode. If you want to find me, you can find me at Suda41. Or if you want to follow our show, that's Night Fear Street. If you want to email our show and send us spooky messages, nightmare on fear street at gmail.com so we can contact the dead of loved ones. If you want to submit to our Patreon, we're going to be having bonus content very soon. That's Patreon slash nightmare on fear street and may or may not, you know, fight the zombie overlords with that money buying better equipment, of course. 
So thanks again, Jimmy, for coming on the show. I really appreciate you coming around and getting onto the Night Fair Street Studios. Yeah, that was, it was fun, man. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I'm Zach. I'm Jimmy. And stay spooky. Spooky. Bye. Bye.